Hello, 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 and welcome back to Alice Talks Football, and welcome back to a live show. And this is a breaking new show because Fabrizio Romano has confirmed sort of Jason Wilcox to Manchester United. So we're going to dive into the latest on that. We've got news about Manchester United approaching a striker signing confirmation. They will sign a striker and some names of who they could be. But the big news is obviously surrounding Jason Wilcox, who's set to be the new technical director, confirmed from Fabrizio Romano. Uh, there is also reports coming out from Sky. There's been some troubles with the Dan Ashworth deal when he won't be joining Manchester United this summer. And there's some trouble with that. I think ultimately, um, Dan Ashworth, could it be a negotiation tactic putting out that we're not going to get Dan Ashworth and we can't afford him this summer to get Newcastle to lower the price because Newcastle wants to bring in a new sporting director this summer? It might be all games, but ultimately, when the setup is done, it will be Omar Barada, Dan Ashworth, Jason Wilcox, and then someone working with Jason Wilcox in sort of recruitment. So Dan Ashworth will be above Jason Wilcox and someone working in recruitment ultimately. But we're going to dive into the news. We're going to dive into the stories. We've got lots going on as well. Ashworth is an ops. We'll of course we'll be working with Ashworth. I, I put Ashworth in trouble, but the editor changed the thumbnail to Ashworth off. So I, I've changed that. Ashworth isn't off. Um, misunderstanding there. The deal was in trouble. There are some reports saying it might be off, but it's just all, it's all media games. It's all media games. But let's talk about the news. Let's get the news up on the screen. Let's get the stories up and let's have a little bit of a discussion people so getting into the news here it was said by Fabrizio Romano major breaking Jason Wilcox has resigned from Southampton he's set to join Manchester United as the new technical director now we've been linked to Jason Wilcox a little bit here and there and we sort of have an indication that he's coming but there's been no confirmation it's just saying there's an expectation United will go for Jason Wilcox there's an expectation that Jason Wilcox will come to United but it's, it's often been very, like, what's the word, speculative. Like, it's sort of the expectation, but we don't know if it's happening, but we had a feeling that it was happening. And, yeah, confirmation is coming in today that Manchester United will go and get Jason Wilcox, according to Romano. And I'm going to talk about Jason Wilcox, who he is, and why this is such a good appointment, in my opinion, in a second. But I do want to dive into the news and stories before I get into stuff. So let me talk about the news, and then we'll talk about my opinions as well. We'll need to wait till the summer. All these guys are good. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we're bringing in loads of good people, but there's going to be delays, which we will get into. So this came out before. So this came out just now. And this came out a couple of hours ago. Manchester United have approached Southampton about hiring the, the football director, Jason Wilcox. United want to make him their technical director as part of the new recruitment team and an offer equivalent to a year of his salary has been made. United believe this means a but meets a buyout clause in his contract, but Southampton are disputing the assistance of the clause and are understood to be annoyed and the manner and timing of United's approach. So it was confirmed by Sky they made an approach and then it was confirmed by Romano literally just now that he's resigned from Southampton and he's set to join United as the new technical director. Now, this story also came out and said that Southampton are prepared to agree a fee with Manchester United for Jason Wilcox, but one that reflects that they would be losing him at a crucial stage. There appears to be an impasse with United believing they've met all the contractual requirements in his release. Man United have met the contractual requirements in his release for Jason Wilcox to join United. Southampton are probably a bit like Newcastle and are a bit annoyed about this. It was said that Omar Barada wants Jason Wilcox to form part of a new recruitment set at Manchester United to be guided eventually by sporting director elect Dan Ashworth. Now, there's obviously some reports and rumours about Dan Ashworth deal being off and all of that, but I think that's all a negotiation tactic from Manchester United to just get Newcastle to lower the ridiculous fee they want to release him from gardening leave as well. Ashworth isn't the be one end or end of end of director of footballs. If our director of football is potentially not placed this summer, could be disastrous, says Alex, and we will have conversations about that. But let's focus on Jason Wilcox before we focus on Ashworth, before we focus on on the transfer news because a little bit of transfer news going about um is Wilcox the ex-Blackburn winner I think he is <laughs> I couldn't tell you that but here are players that he's accredited with developing now he's coming in a technical director role and he was he's was sporting director of Southampton but he's very well known for his academy work Foden, Sancho, Palmer, Lavio, Brahim Diaz, Rico Lewis among many names that he's credited with developing and this was a snippet from an article that I read about him they said this, the prospect of being the forefront of a new era at United under Ineos is a tempting proposition for both men. If Wilcox is lured back to Manchester from Southampton, he would report to sporting director, which would be Dan Ashworth. Wilcox spent almost a decade at Man City and is credited with progressing the careers of Phil Foden, Rico Lewis, 
Cole Palmer, among others. That's a little bit to tell you about him. Now, he's coming into a technical director role, but I'd assume he'd also be working with Nick Cox in the academy. One thing that Dan Ashworth has done really well at Newcastle is develop the academy. One thing that Ineos wants to do is focus on the academy, the best under 80s we've had. While he'll be working more in recruitment and, and with the first team, I also think he'll definitely have some kind of uh, sort of contribution to the academy now if you google who is jason wilcox online it talks all about sort of his academy work and the work he did at manchester city uh, and all of that as well but he actually did do work in recruitment at manchester city recruiting some of the really really young players to come in so potentially with manchester united and ineos wanting to almost have this multi-club ownership approach and you know recruit really young talents and send them to their other clubs on loan maybe wilcox could have a role in that as well because he's sort of known for his work that he's done and actually a little bit of recruitment in terms of academy recruitment and recruitment really young as well. Uh, it said that Barada will arrive at Manchester United this summer. Uh, Dan Ashworth United would like to bring in the summer, but it looks like Dan Ashworth will not be coming to Manchester United for the next year due to Newcastle refusing to negotiate properly. Uh, and Bra and Wilcox, they want to bring in by summer, but Southampton may hold back his gardening leave unless an extra fee is paid. Now, a little bit of insight on Wilcox. He obviously played, uh, he concluded his playing career in 2006 and then joined Manchester City Academy as a coach in 2012. During his time at Manchester City, he was head coach of the club's men's under 18s that obviously made uh, the FA Youth Cup final twice, did not win it though. Um, he he's became sort of the head and one of the coaches of one of the best regarded youth setups in England, which is, of course, the Manchester City Academy, because actually, while not only Phil Foden's really made it United, they produced some amazing talents. Um, his time at Manchester City ended in January last year when Southampton lured him because he was going to go from working in the academy to being a director of football. He's been a director of football at Southampton after they got relegated. And he did a really good job in terms of bringing people in, you know, and dealing with that transfer window at Southampton because they lost so many key people. Um, and yeah, Manchester City wanted to keep on to him, but they understood that they couldn't keep him away from Southampton because he was going to be in a sporting director role, which is a significant upgrade and, and doing having more control. And he's actually sort of doing a lesser role at United, but I guess he's going to the biggest club at United. He's gone from being a sporting director to a technical director, which is a little bit of a downgrade, but not, not really much of a downgrade when you're going from Southampton to Manchester United and Omar Barada, you know, I don't know much about Jason Wilcox. Am I going to act like I heard about him a year ago? No. But the fact that Omar Barada knows Manchester City in and out and, and was at working at Manchester City and wants this guy. If Omar Barada wants this guy, I, I very much trust Omar Barada's judgment in, OK, this is probably the right kind of guy to bring in as well. Wilcox youth development is top class and unlike City, we actually use a lot of our youth exactly. You know, maybe as well, if you're Jason Wilcox and you're doing all this youth development at Man City and then they're selling the likes of Cole Palmer and bringing in Doku and Cole Palmer is twice the player Doku is, you'd be annoyed because you'd be thinking, I've got Cole Palmer, I've developed him, you're bringing in Doku this, Doku that, you're spending 100 million on Grealish, but actually Cole Palmer will be better than Doku and Grealish right now. And maybe that's another reason he left Man City because at Man United, he knows, if he, even though he's going to be in a technical director role, at least if he develops the youth at Manchester United, he's going to know, okay, they're going to be used. They use Mano, they use Garnacho, they're already regulars and Wilcox is the best of the best with the youth and, and Jim Ratcliffe famously said he wants the best in class with everyone at Manchester United and that is what you're getting with Jason Wilcox, you're getting the best in class um, as well. So let's talk about other news, we've got a few new stories going about today that I want to dive into, please do that like button guys if you have not already and of course subscribe down below if you're new but let's get into the other news stories going about. So has there been a bit of an Ashworth blow? There's room, someone put on Twitter that uh, Ashworth did is off, but it's, it's never been off. Like, he's not going to go on guard and even quit Newcastle if he hasn't got the security that he's going to join United. But there has been some major setbacks in the Ashworth deal because, of course, Newcastle have just been particularly difficult to work with. It was said that Manchester United had given up hope of securing Dan Ashworth before the summer, and that was said by the Mail Sport. Now, to be honest... I think we need to get Dan Ashworth in by the summer. I don't think it's the be or end all in my opinion, because if you've got Omar Barada in place, at least we're in a better position. But I don't really want to be going into a summer, especially a summer where it's going to be so important in terms of rebuild with Murta doing it. This is probably our most important, 
Well, we say this every year, to be fair. We do say this every year, but this almost feels like it's going to be our most important summer in terms of rebuilding the map players we need to get out, the map players we need to get in, the map positions we need to address. And I don't really feel comfortable with John Murta doing that. And I think Ineos do need to hurry up and get people in ahead of that, but they've obviously got to make sure it's the right people. And it will be concerning going into the summer without Dan Ashworth, although we'll, ha we'll have Omar Brada in place. So at least Omar Brada won't allow us to spend the budget on one crap player like we normally do each year. But I do think, you know, could this story about the Dan Ashworth blow and could these stories about the Dan Ashworth setback be a little bit of a media game? Sometimes what Manchester United do is we knew we were going to sign Andre Nana, but a couple of days before we put in that third and final bid for Andre Nana to get the deal done, there were sort of reports coming out that he wasn't going to be a United player. They were looking at Diogo Costa and said he was too expensive. And Man United do that a lot. Just before they're going to buy a player, they sort of put reports out that they're maybe not and they're going to look elsewhere, this and that, this and that, and because that's too expensive. Could Man United sort of be like, OK, we're not going to get Dan Ashworth by summer because Newcastle aren't going to lower the price and we, we can't afford that. Could Man United be playing this big Dan Ashworth game, acting like they're not going to get him by summer just so they can agree something with Newcastle by summer? Because... Newcastle want to bring in a new sporting director. A lot of people forget that. Newcastle need a new sporting director. They want to bring in a new sporting director for this summer because this summer for Newcastle is just as big as this summer for United. Newcastle have had an injury crisis. A lot of their players are ageing. They've done nowhere near, near as well if they wanted this summer. They're going to want sort of Paul Mitchell in, but they can't really do that with Dan Ashworth looming over and them still paying him to do absolutely nothing. So I do think that Newcastle will be willing to negotiate and get this deal for Dan Ashworth over the line and lower the price. I think they're just playing hardball because Tenny blamed them because Man United are used to overpaying. Newcastle think, OK, well, if Man United really wants someone, they'll just pay the price to get them in the end. And Ineos are trying to show that we're not the Man United we used to be, but we'll just give in and pay the price. If Ineos go and give Newcastle 20 million, it's going to make the new regime look weak. So Man United aren't going to give in and Newcastle hoping that they will because the old Man United would have given in and paid that much for Ashworth. And I think it's going to be a point where Newcastle will have to give in come summer. And I can imagine it being sort of done and sorted by summer. Apparently, there were some rumours that Omar Brada was actually seen at Manchester United with the staff yesterday. But I'm not sure if that's true. There's a video of Ten Hag going to, I think, what's it called? Like an ITFA or something. The, the meal, if you're doing Ramadan, the meal you have in the evening after fasting all day. I don't know what that meal's called. I feel like it begins with an A or an I. Um, but there was a video and apparently someone was claiming the ball guy and it was Omar Brada. I don't think it was Omar Brada, but there was a thing where all the Muslim players, coaches and staff at United gathered and Tenog joined them. And it was a video on Twitter. And someone said that Omar Brada was there. And it was a ball guy, but I don't think it was Omar Brada. But if anyone knows what that is, do let me know if that was Omar Brada. Um, because there is rumours that he's already working with United and City are OK with that because he's doing it respectfully and that he's had meetings at United as well. Um, um, I'm confident Ashworth will be in place by summer. It's Newcastle's interest to get it sorted. It is. It is Newcastle's interest to get it sorted. Um, I do think Newcastle will give in and get that done as well. In fairness, Newcastle are negotiating properly. If they don't want, if they don't want to or need to release Ashworth, why would they lower their demands? I get from Newcastle's stance why they're doing what they're doing, but I do think it's quite a lot for a sporting director, but it's a, such a big loss for Newcastle. I get why they're doing what they're doing. I think we'd be doing the same if we were in the situation, but I think ultimately they will lower the price because we'll get to summer and it'll be a bit of a position where, yeah, that is too much as well. Um, do executive salaries and compensation for them even go towards FFP? I'm not actually sure, but apparently I think it does. It wasn't Barada, it was just a bull guy. It looked like just a bull guy to me, but there was a rumour going about it was Barada, but I couldn't tell you for sure, but I didn't think it was him, to be honest as well. City mostly use Academy to balance the books, yeah. <laughs> the books which uh, are very dodgy. I think City have probably got the dodgiest books in football. Let's talk about a few other news stories going about. It was said that Jason Wilcox will need to serve a 12-month notice period before joining United. I assume that that will probably be lower. I'm not sure. I mean, he may have to finish it out at Southampton, but by the way, Southampton has sort of acted and they're a bit confused. I think it could be one that Man United get done in the summer, which is why we might have to pay an extra bit of money. It was also said in terms of United and Manchester United's plans, it was said that Manchester United are thought to be looking to add someone in that role that is likely to oversee player pathways throughout the Ineos group, which includes Nice in France and Lausanne in Switzerland. It looks like Ineos want to sort of bring in Dan Ashworth, Omar Barada, Jason Wilcox, a recruitment director, but also someone that's going to be overseeing the three clubs in general. Because you look at, you know, Buffunde was signed for Lausanne, well, he's only on loan, but it'll probably be permanent. 
um, with the feeling that if he does well there, then he'll go to Nice and go to United. But there is rumours of Man United signing Todibo from Nice and then also bringing in Anselimo and then loaning him to Nice because he's 18 to develop at Nice for a year. There's also rumours about that as well. So it looks like there's a feeling that Man United are going to be sort of buying players and buying them for Nice or like loaning them to Nice or Nice are going to be buying players and the Son are going to be buying the best young talents to eventually move up to Manchester United like they've done with Profunde. It seems that there could be some sort of multi-club approach there going on as well. Big everyone in the chat, it's called It Far. That is what it's called. I thought I knew it began with an I. Um, yeah, Ineos need to do a proper clear out. They can demand a certain style of play, but they need to bring in players to facilitate that. 100%. 100%. Ineos have a massive clear out to do. They need to bring in a lot of players, but they need to sell a lot of players. They need to sign the right players. There's a lot to do and it's possible, but it's, it's going to be difficult because you've got to find the right players. And unfortunately, one thing United don't do is find the right kind of players as well. Uh, Chelsea do the same, sell all their academy players. Yeah, the third thing is Chelsea and Manchester City have probably produced two of the best academy players in football, but they sell them all. I think, you know, Carrington, you can't beat academy-wise because we play them all, we nurture players. But when you look at so many good players that came through the City and Chelsea academy, we never play. And that's what's so funny about Cole Palmer. It's the one team that sell all their good academy players have then gone and brought one off a rival club and he's now looking like a £100 million player. Maybe not that good, but he, he's been unbelievable. Like, I know he scored a lot of penalties, but if you actually watched his game versus Burnley, he could have had about four or five assists if Chelsea could actually finish. If we had good players around him, he would have been putting some incredible level performance in Cole Palmer. He really would. I wonder why all these City executives who produced and helped them want to leave City and join their rivals, Omar Brad and now Wilcox. One, because we're a better, bigger and more historic team. Two, because City could be going down with those 115 charges. I think it's a, I think it's a mixture of things as well. Uh, great show, Alice. We need to rebuild and bin some of these players. Absolutely agree. Um, all right, I'm going to ask you guys a question to, and you can put your answers in the chat if you want to. Five players that you'd realistically sell and why? And when, when I say five players, I don't want you putting Martial and Donny. Martial and Donny are going to go. Martial and Donny are, are the basics. Five players that aren't or that are the club right now that you would sell. Because um, I think Lindelof you can get 20 million for. I think Mutsomne you can get at least 30 million for. I think Sancho we can get 30 million for. I think um, they would be my main three. Anthony, if we could sell him, I would, but I don't think we will. So I'd probably say maybe Greenwood we can get 30, 40 million for because he's not going to come back. And then maybe Casemiro we could get 30, 40 million for. Um, but also actually Maguire we could maybe get 30 million for. Like, who would you guys sell? It's, I'm, I'm intrigued to know everyone's sort of thoughts as well. Omar also getting a promotion joining us from his previous role. Yeah, he's going to be a club promotion, but I'm really glad Omar Brad is coming in. I think he could be the most impactful just because his ability to limit budgets and be like, no, do not spend 100 million on this rubbish player, which is something that we love to do and something that we've continuously done. Kaya says, Sancho, McTominay, Maguire, Lindelof, Greenwood. I'm going to agree with that one. They would be my five to sell as well. Realistically, when you look at the money, they can bring in as well. Alice, United Muppeteers said on the channel the other day that Ashworth will join. It's just if it's just a matter of um, not it's just a matter of when, not if um, they are potentially looking at bringing someone with experience sorting out the deal. Yeah, um, I did say look, obviously Ashworth sort of reports of the Ashworth deal being in trouble and all of that. Ashworth will be the director of football at Manchester United, but it's a matter of when, not if. He might not be here for a while, but he will be the next director of football at United. I'm 100% sure of that. The whole situation wouldn't have gone on unless he had some clarity by United. He will be. It's just a matter of when. It might have, it might be two months. It could be a year and a half. That's that's the annoying thing as well. Someone said Rashford, Bruno, Anthony, Casemiro. That's that's four big ones to sell. Sancho, Maguire, Rashford, Wan-Bissaka, McTominay says that person. Yeah, let me know which five you would sell. Um, I'd probably agree with Kaya here. These will probably be the five I sell because realistically looking at the funds we can bring in and who's going to add the most of the squad next year as well. Um, can not make up all happy bringing the best in class um, what other clubs are already doing it. Yeah, other clubs have been bringing in the best in class for ages, but finally United are getting on this train. McTominay goes, Sancho already out the door. Maguire, it's expensive for what he does. Greenwood, obvious reasons. And Malassia, I just, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, that's 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 five obvious ones as well. Yeah, Malassia, I re I did like Malassia, and he was quite good in the big games. But it's really sad what's happened. And I, someone commented, and I can't remember what it was, but someone commented saying they'd gone through the exact same injury Malassia had gone through, and they still feel it now, and it's a really difficult one to recover from. Uh, and no wonder he's been out for a year. So I do think that Malassia injury could maybe affect him. Hopefully it doesn't. Hopefully I'm wrong, but from what I'm hearing, that Malassia injury could be. Unfortunately, quite, quite serious. Um, but hopefully Manassi is OK and hopefully he recovers. Um, I want to talk about some other stories coming out 
And this report from Matteo Moretta saying that Manchester United are looking for two forwards this summer, one of a high level, a big signing, and another that is not very expensive, less than 40 million, but potentially a younger forward. Well, Xerxes will be about 40 million euros, so bish bash bosh on that. Uh, but let's talk about sort of United's forward plan. Now, there's sort of been mixed reports on what United's plan is for bringing in a forward, bringing in the striker in particular. There's been quite a lot of mixed reports going about and around. But from what I'm hearing and what I'm feeling, it's it's very much a suggestion of it's been confirmed Manchester United will bring in a striker this summer. It's been confirmed that Manchester United will sign a striker this summer. It's been confirmed by Romano. It's been confirmed by all the reliable outlets that we are signing a number nine this summer. What hasn't been confirmed is the number nine we're signing. But there's a few things going in and a few things going about that Manchester United have really been looking at Sesco and Cirque because of the release clauses. That's sort of what's been going about. Um, Sesco has a £42 million release clause. Cirque has a 35 apparently according to Florian Plettybird, Cirque will be £35 million. They are saying that they don't want to spend £40 million on a striker because they rate Hoyland highly, but they want someone that can challenge Hoyland that is good. And it looks like Cirque and Hoyland are the two sort of strikers being explored. And Romano did confirm we'll sign a striker but he said it does, he can't confirm when because if we spend lots of money on Elise and we spend lots of money on the centre backs, it's going to be a cheap striker. But there is a feeling there will be a striker. Um, there is footage and videos of Man United's new technical director, Jason Wilcox, who was this player for 17 years who moved into coaching and then became a technical director and an academy director and now coming to United as a, as a thing. I will maybe do a video on Jason Wilcox and what he'll add to United if you want to see. Uh, but one thing that has been confirmed is United signing a striker as well. Um, United Muppeteers said they recorded a podcast today where Tenard, Wilcox, Barada, Ashworth and South American targets and much more were discussed. There's a feeling that Manchester United are going to be targeting South American targets throughout sort of the summer and throughout the long term project with Ineos looking at those South American talents as well. I would cash in on Hoyland this summer. Are you mad? I think Hoyland's brilliant. I think he's going to be inconsistent. He's raw. I think he gets absolutely no service and help from his teammate. But I think Hoyland has a brilliantly high ceiling. I think I, I think Hoyland's amazing. Ipswich Town have just scored in the last kick of the game in the championship to beat Southampton. Ipswich have just gone 3-2 two, two up against Southampton. And McKenna, previously at United could be getting back-to-back -back promotions with Ipswich because Southampton is probably one of the most difficult games in the Championship. We've been talking about Southampton and obviously Wilcox. But a massive win just coming in there for Ipswich as well. A report's coming in that Pochettino is going to be sacked. Um, and with Xavi obviously leaving and Klopp leaving, should Manchester United and sack Tenag because the good managers might. Uh, that's an interesting comment. So... Xavi is going and Klopp is going. That's confirmed. The two goals going. Bayern, Barcelona and Liverpool will all be looking at managers. Xavi Alonso is staying. So the manager pool that is about is Nolgesman, De Zerbi and Amarin. Those three clubs are probably going to be battling out for those three players, which means if United sack Ten Hag, who do United go for? Because do you think we're going to beat out Bayern, Liverpool and, and Barcelona to the next big manager? I don't feel confident because of how every manager's failed at United before. That's a big question for you guys. You know, would who who do United get with all these other top clubs sort of removing their managers this season in need of a manager? Who's going to be available? And there was a rumour we we're going to go for Ange Postecoglou, but I, I can't see that happening. I don't think that's the most reliable as well. Diego said, I'd happily take Hoyland at Palace. Yeah, he's a great player. There's not enough good gaffers, gaffers to fill vacancies this summer. I think one big team could really miss out on the top manager as well. Uh, Mason Mount scoring the winner against Chelsea to get Poch sat. That would be amazing. Hopefully, Mason Mount's found his scoring boots boots right at the right time, right ahead of that game versus Chelsea. Do you know what? The only good thing about that game was Mason Mount score. That was a horrifically bad game, but Mason Mount scoring just made that game for me. I feel sorry for Mason Mount. I think he's a good player. Um, you know, I wouldn't have signed him if it was my, if it was in my dream sort of Man United signings, but I do think he's a good player and I do think he can offer stuff for United. I think his whole injury situation has been really, really harsh. Um, so to see Mason Mount come off the bench and score, yeah. Um, I have to say, what what a finish. Um, the Portman Road, I think Ipswich are going to go up. There's actually a feeling that Ajax are looking at McKenna. McKenna was one of the managers linked to United, and while he's got back-to-back -back promotions, I think going from Ipswich to United is, is such a big step, especially when you've got to deal with the personalities at United. And remember, Ips, you know, McKenna, the, the players tried to force McKenna out of Manchester United, 
they they try to force him out. Manchester United. They're saying that he's he's, he's an academy coach. He's not good enough to coach first team players. And now McKenna's getting back to back promotion. So I don't think United would go for McKenna because the players try to force him out and were writing leaks about how bad he was. Uh, but he's doing a really really good job as well. Wilcox would be twelve months. Simon Peach reported. Yeah, I think United can get that lowered if they pay a little bit of money, which I think they might do because it's not as much as the Dan Ashworth money as well. Nogglesman would be best, but will he go to Liverpool? Will he go to you know? Apparently, do you know what's mad? Bayern Munich have been a bit of an idiot, idiotically run club at the moment. Bayern Munich basically got rid of Nagelsmann and apparently trying to bring Nagelsmann back. Like apparently Bayern Munich are seriously exploring if they can bring Nagelsmann back, which just makes me laugh because I'm like, well, you're the ones that basically got rid of him. And I think they've realised, oh, actually, no, he's quite a good manager. That's a little bit silly of us. I think they finally realised that might be a bit silly of us trying to get rid of Nagelsmann there as well. That might be a bit silly of us. Rashford's our biggest earner and getting into his later 20s. It's mad that he's not considered being sold. I think if the big offer came in, they maybe consider considered bit him being sold. If maybe 100 million came in, because um, then you have to look at it and go, actually, could that 100 million be invested elsewhere? But I do think that Rashford will be much more difficult to replace than people think. I think a lot of people, yeah, Rashford's been crap lately, but actually a lot of people think, OK, if we played this guy instead of Rashford, would be miraculously better. And that guy that does play when Rashford doesn't play, isn't much better. You know, Garnacho's been our best winger this season. No one else has delivered other than Garnacho an attack for me. Hoyland's delivered in moments as well. Alice, if United don't sign the players we need, we're doomed. I, this summer, we've got to get it right. Manchester United have to get this summer right. If we don't sign the right players and make the rec right recruitment, we will be in trouble next season, no matter who the manager is, whether it's Tenog or someone new. Because when you look at the athletical and technical ceiling of this squad, it's one of the lowest in the league. Athletically, we're one of the worst squads in the league in terms of fitness. And with the Premier League being more intense and more athletic than ever, and you need to work more and more in the Premier League, that's a big worry. But technically, we're poor. Other than Kobe Mayno and maybe Delo and Martinez, we haven't got any technical players in the team. Anyone with some real technical ability. So, yeah, that is another worrying, worrying aspect. Guys, please do hit that like button if you have not already. And, of course, subscribe down below to Alice Talks Football if you're new. I go live every single evening on the channel, keeping you guys up to date with all the latest Manchester United news, transfer news, takeover news and more. So if that does sound like your thing, make sure you're subscribed. I do short videos in the morning, which are 10-minute updates, going through all the news like that. And then I do live streams that are between 30 minutes to an hour long, normally around 40 minutes long, where I chat about you, chat to the news, chat about the news with you guys and update you on all that is going on as well. I would play Mount instead of Rashford for the next few games. We need to show him he has to work for his team. I understand that to an extent, but I don't like the idea of playing Mount left wing. If we're going to play Mount, I want to see him play central. For me, I don't like Rashford playing striker. I don't like Bruno playing on the wing. I don't like Mount playing on the wing. I like our best players to play in their best positions. Although that being said, I would rather see Delo at left back than Wamba Saka because Wamba Saka looks really uncomfortable at left back. I would just put Wamba Saka back at right back because I think Delo can deal with playing on the left more as well. Um, I'd give Rashford one year and sell him. And if he's not consistent, then so yeah, I'm, I'm the same. I'd give Rashford one more year as well. Um, don't think Rashford will ever come near replicating last season against us, Alex. I understand why people think that, um, but I think he can. Um, I would give him one more year because I, I, I know what he's capable of, but he is becoming increasingly frustrating. He is becoming increasingly frustrating as well. Uh, over 451 watching, guys. Let's get to 200 likes. So everyone can hit that like button. Someone said, sell Luke Shaw in the summer. Another sick note, cash in. 40. To be fair, I love Luke Shaw. And I actually think when fit, he's the best left back in the league. And people will laugh at me for saying that. Um, I really do, but I would I would cash in on him for 40 million if the opportunity came. Just because of his age, his injuries, I probably would cash in 40 million for Luke Shaw this summer. And I love Luke Shaw. Like I, I'm a bit of a Luke Shaw backer. I'm one of those deluded people that thinks Luke Shaw is the absolute bee's knees. I really do. I think he's I think he's brilliant. Absolutely. Um, if Ipswich don't get promoted, I could see Premier League players coming in for Leaf Davis. Yeah, he looks like a good player for Ipswich, doesn't he? As well. Uh, big up everybody in the chat. Big up everybody watching today's show um we're just discussing sort of buying and selling i think right now on the front of buying and selling for united realistically i would go for todibo and branthwaite and sell Maguire and lindelof i say realistically like it's going to happen you know what luck probably isn't going to happen i'd go for todibo and branthwaite and sell Maguire and lindelof i'd then go for um a fullback i'd probably sell one of wampa saka or malassia and go for another fullback someone that is predominantly maybe a left back but is comfortable playing on the right hand side if needed just to bring in that depth because at least todd both worst came to worst could play right back i'd then get a dm i would go for even matt sweet for amadou depending on price 
And then I would get a box to box midfielder, someone that is technical. Unfortunately, I think Jan Evers will be out of budget. Maybe a Maxim Kakare, someone that's technical and good on the ball to take that over Alliance of Mayno. And I would let Amrabat go, I'd let Ericsson go, I'd let Casemiro go, and I'd sell McTominay. And then I would look to bring in a Nico Elise type winger and, and sell Sancho. And then I would look to let go of Martial and bring in a Xerxes. That That's personally what I would look to do. Um, do I think United will do that? I, I, honestly, I get excited and super hyped up after every chance of the window. And then I am just left disappointed by Manchester United. So, to be honest, I can't tell you what we're going to do. I can't tell you what we're going to do. We could do that, but I don't think we will. Um, I rate Shaw, but who's going to pay a decent fee for someone who's basically missed the entire season? 100%. That's why I said if we get offered that, I would accept it. Uh, if you could sell, sell only five players and buy only four players, who would you choose? Sell only five and buy only four. Ooh, that's difficult. I'd sell Lindelof. I'd sell Ericsson. Um, I'd sell Greenwood because that will bring us funds. I'd sell Sancho because he's not going to play anyway. So that's four. And then I would sell... Would I sell McTominay? I feel like if I could have five signings, I'd sell McTominay because I could bring in another midfielder. Lindelof... Lindelof, Greenwood, McTominay. Yeah, I don't know. Lindelof, Eriksson, because I don't think they'll have much use next season. Sancho and Greenwood won't be in the squad next season. And then probably McTominay. And then I would bring in um, two Amene, if we're being unrealistic, but I don't think that's going to happen. I'd bring in Cirque Elise, Branthwaite, Probably, probably, probably Matt Sweet for if we're being unrealistic, to a Jan Nevers. It's difficult because if it's five, it's difficult. Uh sell five, Shaw, Bruno, Hoyland, McTominay, and Anana. Really? You'd set the five out of the out of all the players at United, those are the five players you'd sell. Hoyland, Bruno, McTominay, Shaw, and Anana. Like not Donny, not Martial, not Lindelof, not Anthony, not Sancho. That's mad. Wurtz, Wurtz is unbelievable. He's one that players like Jal Nevers and players like Wurtz are ones that next year, when I think we need a longer term Bruno replacement, because I think the priority midfield needs to be a six. But next year, when we think of maybe potentially moving on Bruno, Wurtz, Musiala, Jal Nevers technically is a deeper player, but we might play a 4 3 3 and get rid of the number 10 is, is the type of players I'd splash 80 million on, uh, 100%. I think you need someone to play alongside Mane on the pivot. Yeah, 100%. And Amadou Anana, Matt Sweet for type signings, 100% what we need as well. Um, yeah, I can't believe we're going to let Varane go for free when he's our best centre back. is mad. Absolutely mad. We need players who want to play for United. I miss Ahmad, um, but get rid of foolishly players. Yeah, I feel sorry that Ahmad was suspended. It was so unfair. Well, I mean, it was the rules, I guess, to suspend him. But yeah, our midfield's where we're poor. Do you know what? I'd sign two midfielders. I'd sign an Amadou Anana, Max Weaver, physical 6 8 hybrid. And then I would sell a player with a technical ability like Jal Nevers. But I think we'd have to look for a cheaper alternative to Jal Nevers. Maybe it's a Benneka, maybe it's um, a Maxine Kakare, that kind of player as well. Problem is, Sancho's not going to help with SFP much. Yeah. And that's why Ineos want to try and see if they can get 40 million or more from him. Um, but that's why I think McTominay and Greenwood need to be sold because of FFP there as well. Would you swap Bruno plus Mount for Wurtz? <sighs> That's a difficult one because that's two for one. Um, that's two for one. Next season, maybe not. Um, but that's two for one. Uh, I think some of you guys would, but I think you, I just don't know how Wurtz would explode. I think Wurtz would explode in the Premier League, but it is two for one. And I think considering how bad our midfield is, the only four players I keep in our midfield that is Bruno, Mount, Mayno. There's only three players I keep in the whole midfield, Bruno, Mount, Mayno, long term, and we're selling two of them. So pro probably not just yet. Estavo William, I don't know anything about this guy, apart from the fact that he's really good and everyone is saying this guy is going to be unbelievable. Like, everybody's saying this guy is going to be unbelievable. Well, this guy is going to be better than Hendrik, apparently. I, I, I don't know how good he is. I don't know how good he will be. But apparently this guy could be better than Hendrik as well. We've got over 400 people watching and 200 likes, bare minimum. Yeah, if half of you hit the like button, we're going to hit the 200 like button target. So big up everybody. We need two CMs, two centre-back signings, but finances are tight. Realistically, we need two CMs, two centre-backs, a full-back, a winger and a striker. We're looking at seven signings with a tight budget. So we're going to have... That's why selling is so important. That is why selling this summer is key when you actually look at the budget and everything available because it's going to be... 
it's going to be tight. It's going to be really, really tight. Uh, big up everybody in the chat. Please do the like button if you have not already. I'm probably going to wrap up the live stream in a minute. It's only a short one because I'm super tired. It's a super long day, but I wanted to get into, of course, the Jason Wilcox news. Um, there is reports that United are going to sign a teenage striker from Port Vale to bring into the academy as well. So I will keep an eye on those reports and rumours as well. Um, I do have some videos scheduled to come up soon um, over the next week. I will be working on some second channel videos soon as well. Uh, do check out the second channel if you want content more on Liverpool, Tottenham, Arsenal, Newcastle, Chelsea, and Manchester City. I cover those sort of sides and they're in general Premier League sides on the second channel as well. But be it everybody in the chat, Jason Walcott might be serving a 12-month notice, which is a little bit of a downside. I will be back live tomorrow, so make sure to subscribe for that with post notification bell on. See you next time. Bye.